I think it's something where tonight you just enjoy one last game. And for now, the, the Coyotes are still Arizona's team for, for one more day, so just kind of embrace it. Pretty special coming from Josh Doan, as he was set to play his final game in Arizona. This in the same year that he made his debut in the NHL. Interesting to note, the same year his dad, Shane Doan, made his NHL debut, that was the year the Jets were initially moved to Arizona. After years of instability, bankruptcy, ownership changes, and constant rumors, it was the Arizona Coyotes' final day in Arizona. While some will say hockey doesn't belong in the desert, ironically, on the same night they played their final game, the best goal scorer in the world right now chased down 70 goals. Arguably, Arizona native Austin Matthews may never have played hockey if not for hockey in the desert. It's just such a shame that this ownership group couldn't get it right, and now fans and a community have to watch hopelessly as they lose their team. And it is a great young team that holds a lot of promise. So on what was a special night as fans held watch parties outside, inside the Coyotes delivered with energy, plenty of goals as you could tell how much they wanted it, some big stops between the pipes, Salt Lake sucks chance. And it goes over the glass. And so on a night where the atmosphere was heavy, a little self-deprecating humor was nice. Yeah, I'll be working Uber for a while. I'm, I'm right there with you. Uber Eats. <laughs> So yeah, a tough night for hockey, but let's get into it. And right out of the gate, the Coyotes brought energy. Here, Carrick along the boards, and he's hit with a solid check from O'Brien, which immediately after, Dumpin hits the ref, puck in space, and O'Brien rifles it home. Just two minutes into the game, he snaps it over the glove of Picard, and tell me these guys didn't want it. On the other end, though, Dreisaitl back to Nugent Hawkins. He fires it, and it's called a goal, but he knew it right away, and yeah, it went off the crossbar so it was not a goal but they were pushing getting seven shots consecutively as ingram stood tall early but d to d ekholm to the front and they score a nice shot pass as sam carrick in front with his 10th made it a 1-1 hockey game and the rest of the period was fairly tame until right at the end moser to keller and he scores just after the buzzer he beats picard but not the clock as this remained a tied game heading into the second where if it didn't count in the First, Keller tried again with another attempt, but no dice this time. As for the Oilers, they had a couple great chances. Henrique denied by Ingram, then trying again. Hyman as it just hits the outside of the net, and this was hilarious. Trying to cover it, no one can freeze it. Meanwhile, McDavid tries to fake him out like he had it. A funny sequence as Ingram was loving it. And that's when the Yotes found their game again. Keller with a great look here, then Carcone walking in, but he's denied. Until not a minute later, it's McBain a lead pass that sends Michelli in alone and he scores knocking it out of mid air he comes in goes forehand to backhand and thank you ma'am it's his 17th of the year to take the lead and that then is where we heard the Salt Lake sucks chance and it goes over the glass and out of play and you can see it on the face. This was tough for the players, too. And look, I get it. It's emotional. But listen, this isn't Salt Lake City's fault. Regardless, though, that was about it for the second as we would head into the third and final period of Arizona hockey. And the Coyotes were dangerous again. Keller nearly squeaking one in here. But then five minutes in, Kolyachonik finds Kraus with space and he scores. From the backhand, the longtime Coyote gets his 23rd of the year to take a two-goal lead. Trying to respond, the Oilers would push back. Fogel cuts to the middle. He shoots and he scores. A beautiful shot. He beats Ingram bar down to make it a one-goal game. Having said that, though, with under seven to go now, the Oilers would take a penalty. Ekholm getting called for interference would put the Coyotes on the power play. And as they set up, Keller finds Gunther. He shoots and he scores. Gunther's 18th of the year. It's a laser to beat Picard high glove. And this was a big one. As the the Oilers were forced to pull Picard with five to go. Ekholm shot, blocked, Dursey picks it up, and he goes the length of the ice for the empty netter to seal the deal, and as the game was wrapping up, it really began to set in. The emotions of Walsh, Matt, Tyson, it was tough to see, but that did it. It was an emotional game, and what's special, though, is that at least the fans got to say goodbye. Stan Wilson, the team trainer, received a nice send-off as the Coyotes saluted Mullet Arena and their fans for the final time. Well, if anybody needs a ride to the airport or you need your palms trimmed or something, give me a call.
Yeah, I'll be working Uber for a while. I'm, I'm right there with you. Uber Eats. <laughs> Now, the humor in the moment was awesome, but it was truly bittersweet. Just gut-wrenching for the fans, the players, and more than anything, I felt for the staff. I personally believe hockey does belong in Arizona. So long, Coyotes. Hopefully, we see you again, but that's about it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it very much, and I'll see you in the next one.